Hi guys, Sully Dubs here, and today I'm doing a video review on the Honor View 20. Now this was among the first phones to feature an in-display selfie camera, which makes it pretty unique. Now at the time of making this video, and even though its published date is going to be coinciding with when the embargo lifts, essentially I don't have an official UK price. However, I'm going to guesstimate. For 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, expect to pay around £399. Add 2 gigabytes of RAM, taking it to 8 gigabytes um, of RAM, uh, expect £449. And then have 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, so double the storage space, it's taking it to around £499. And the reason I get these prices from is because of its Chinese, um, the Chinese pricing that came out uh, for the Honor phone. Now in terms of its competitors, it hasn't really got any at the time of making the video because no other phone has an in-display selfie camera. However, we do have a notch, we do have phones with even like a slider like the Magic 2 or you have the Vivo Nex S with a pop-up camera. Now all of these uh, phones come in at around £560 and upward. So in this video I'll be comparing the View 20 to the Pixel 3 XL, I'll be also comparing it to the Mate 20 Pro and also and finally the OnePlus 6T which out of that out of that bunch is the cheaper variant. So bearing in mind that this is actually the cheapest device that I've actually mentioned, it's very intriguing to see how it compares. So first let's talk about the build quality and design. Now one of the actual key features for me in any smartphone is a 3.5mm jack and I'm very happy to say that Honor has retained it at the top. There's also an infrared sensor in order to control um, your, your home appliances such as your TV and, and what have you. There's a USB-C port at the bottom with a downward firing um, speaker as well. Um, on the right hand side you've got the volume rocker and the power button. And the left hand side is a SIM tray that pops up and you've got a dual 4G SIM, um, nano SIM tray uh, for your SIM cards. There is no micro SD card expansion and also there is no waterproofing to be seen. So in other words, there's no IP um, rating. That said, Honor did say it is waterproof, but I wouldn't chuck it in a pool if I were you. Now when it comes to the design, I think this phone is one of the best looking smartphones that you can currently find. This V kind of shaped is etched onto the uh, rear glass display, which means it moves with light. It's kind of like an honor tradition to do this, but I really love what they've done with the View 20, unlike anything I've actually seen in the past before. And better still, it kind of shifts uh, when you're putting it under different lights. So for example, if you're under sunlight or if you're under LED uh, lights, it's going to shine differently. And I think that's absolutely stunning. Now aside the blue color that you can see in front of you, you can also get it in uh, like a bright red and also black. But personally, blue is for me kind of like the honor signature color. So it's why I requested the blue color to, to come in. Now at the back, there's a rear mounted fingerprint sensor. Again, fantastic touch by honor because I much prefer having a rear mounted um, uh, sensor and then you've got at the back a 48 megapixel um, single rear facing uh, lens you've also got a TOF a time of flight sensor for 3d scanning that is not unfortunately available uh, at the moment on the global version so I couldn't test that you got infrared and you got flash and then at the front you've got that selfie uh, camera that's built into the display as you can see, I'm just opening up IGN just because I was looking up Redrix broadswords for the um, on Destiny 2. You can see how that camera looks like. It is pretty unique. It's not like anything you've seen before. Now, the biggest question I had when I when I saw this is how does that integrate with the actual notification tray? Well, the notification bar itself is actually really well integrated. As you can see, like you've I've got the airplane mode right now um, enabled, and it just sits to the right of the camera. If I just move this, uh, move it down, as you can see, it's kind of just in that display and it's not actually interfering with it. Although the display isn't moving around that camera. It simply is literally a cut in the display and the camera has been placed in. Now that camera um, actually itself is 25 megapixels and I'll get into the camera section in just a bit, but it's pretty impressive. Now the biggest thing for me coming from a OnePlus 5T and among using other phones such as the Pixel and what have you 
is the fact that this phone runs MIUI. Now, MIUI isn't loved by many simply because it's got a, um, it's an Android overlay which adds a little bit of bulk. And I must say, I do miss having that stock Android feel that I got on the OnePlus or uh, on the Google Pixel phone. However, I think Honor have done a good job in terms of integrating all the features and everything that you'd want uh, on this uh, smartphone. These things can be useful for some, but personally I actually disable all of them and like using Android almost as it was designed. So it's not to say I, I greatly dislike uh, what uh, Honor have done and you can even see I've installed Nova Launcher on it to make it feel more like a stock Android device. But nevertheless, it's just something that I, I found that it just kind of niggled away at the background. I just missed that sort of stock uh, feel. So now let's talk about its performance and let's start off with that display. Now the display is a full HD plus, so it's running a 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio um, given the uh, small little camera there. Now the display itself isn't to be said that it's its greatest asset, I would say it's actually a little bit disappointing. Its contrast ratio isn't great, it's only using an LCD IPS uh, display, which means that if you're going to be um, using it at an angle, what you'll notice is a slight blue shift. Uh, you might be even able to see this on camera. It's very slight, but it can be annoying if you're going to be looking at your phone when it's or placed on your table and you're looking at it from, um, from above uh, rather than directly on. In terms of its color accuracy, now I'm just looking through the, my Instagram. I, in terms of color accuracy, I didn't have too many complaints. It's not a picture perfect uh, display like you'd find on a Super AMOLED such as in the, uh, on the Galaxy S9 or the, um, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Those phones will have a fantastic vibrant display that hits all the tones, whereas this on the other hand doesn't look as nice and doesn't look as vibrant. It looks a little bit kind of subdued and not as um, not as impressive as um, I would have liked or would have seen. So in other words, it's decent enough, but it's not amazing. In terms of its brightness level, it does get pretty bright. As you can see, I've got it around at around 60% uh, or so. Uh, so you can put it brighter and obviously take it all the way down where you can barely see the screen. It doesn't really compete with, again, the likes of Super AMOLED displays, uh, which are able to hit sort of like that HDR uh, to get all the way um, really bright. So if you're under a ski slope and you've got very bright ambient light, you'll be able to see them with no problems. This isn't the case with this phone. It gets around to a 350 to 400 nits, which is acceptable, but for a flagship phone, I would have liked a little bit more. And now let's move on to the actual performance side, the benchmarks. Now this phone, as I said, has got the version I've got has 8 gigabytes of RAM, but it also houses the Kirin 980, which at the time making this video is the fastest mobile processor you can find on an Android device. And the reason I say Android is because um, iPhones have the A12 Bionic, which arguably on paper is a faster processor. Now, when it put to the test, it pretty much equates to the numbers and what you kind of expect from the fastest Android processor. It is very much blisteringly quick, gaming is fantastic, you can play any sort of games you want fluidly on it, PUBG for example, Asphalt 8, very intensive games, completely breezes through and with 8GB of RAM, multitasking is an absolute breeze. When it comes to battery life, it houses a 4000 milliamp battery um, inside. Now, this pretty much equated for me in terms of uh, kind of like a full day of, day of use and then charging it, pretty much how I would normally um, approach most phones. However, when you compare it to its uh, competitors, you can see over here the OnePlus 6T is very much um, far, far above and beyond um, any of its competitors. That said, it is the, the View 20 is ahead of um, some other competitors, so it's pretty kind of like in the middle, but mediocre for a 4000 milliamp battery. So now we move on to the camera section. Now the front facing camera is the one that was pretty intriguing to me because the 25 megapixel camera actually did a very good job. And you'll be able to see in this kind of like four way shootout that the front facing camera does reproduce a pretty good job even though it does seem dark you can see that in the background I can see the shard um, in the image whereas with two of the other phones you just can't see them. However the Pixel 3 does really fantastic post-processing and therefore allows you to see the shard, but then also does look a slight bit overdone and overworked, almost like it's been photoshopped, which, you know, 
it's been post-processed by, by uh, the phone. So overall, when it comes to the front-facing camera, I don't think it's bad, but neither is it amazing. It does a, re a relatively good job, and if you're going to take selfies with your friends, you won't have any problems. Now moving on to the rear-facing 48 megapixel camera. It's the largest sensor we've seen so far on a smartphone. And to be honest, I was expecting fantastic results. And in all honesty, I got relatively good results, not the best results that I expected. The reason I say this is because in comparison to the Mate 20 Pro or the Pixel 3 uh, XL, in some points the View 20 didn't look as good, especially when you cropped in or zoomed into the image, you could see that there was a little bit of a difference. Now, bear in mind that all these um, phones were taken in the same sort of environment, in the same sort of lighting, and very uh, on a very standard mode. If you switch on HDR, which is a little bit of a faff through the camera app on uh, the other phone, then you'll find that the results are tremendously better. And I think the HDR capabilities of this phone, it's something that an honor should be applauded about. However, it's not to be you know, over exaggerated of how good it is, simply because when you compare it again to its competitors, its competitors do again a fantastic job, and in some respect, a better job. So bear that in mind that the rear facing camera is very good, but it's not something that really sets it apart from the rest of its competitors or uh, phones that have actually been out for at least six months now. Now what I did find interesting is in the rear facing camera app, uh, you could have a 48 megapixel option and then you had a 48 megapixel AI ultra clarity mode. Now the AI ultra clarity really does a fantastic job of bringing extra detail to the field. And here, it's almost like um, Google Pixel's um, HDR Plus Enhanced mode, or again, for the Mate 20 Pro of a similar sort of uh, mode as well. I think this mode is fantastic. However, it does take a few extra seconds to shoot. So if you want to quickly snap away at some shots, you can't do that on that uh, ultra clarity mode. However, you can see the differences for yourself. There is extra detail there that's pretty much, not saying lost, but kind of made up um, by AI and actually done a fantastic and accurate job. Now I should also mention in terms of low light photography, both the front and rear facing camera do a competent job. It's pretty good, however there is a bit of um, uh, image noise which occurs when you're going to be taking photos in low light, so do bear that in mind, especially when you compare it to the Pixel 3's post processing abilities or the dual triple camera approach that the Mate 20 Pro do they will produce a much better image than the View 20. And finally, on to recording. In terms of the capabilities, it goes 4K up to 30 FPS and 1080p up to 60 FPS, which is pretty much okay, but not to be something to be shouted about. And a front-facing camera does 1080p full HD at 30 FPS. So this pretty much leads me on to my verdict. What do I think about this device? Now, given this comes in at around 400 pounds, I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck with this smartphone. Sure, it might not tick every single box in the book. For example, it hasn't got the best display, it hasn't got wireless charging, it hasn't got waterproofing, it hasn't got a micro SD card expansion, it doesn't run a, a, run a stock Android, it runs an uh, Android overlay called Magic UI or MIUI. But it does have a very unique design, a rear fingerprint mount, a rear finger print sensor, a 3.5mm jack which is a rarity nowadays, an in-display camera which makes it very nice for scrolling and you don't have to worry about an ugly notch of any sort, and more than anything you've got a flagship performance with plenty of storage and plenty of RAM to play around with. So ultimately you are looking at an incredible device, and one that I would personally use as a daily driver, which coincidentally have been using as a daily driver and this has become my new daily driver. Of course there's going to be plenty of phones coming in 2019 so very much intrigued to see how this would compare as time goes by but at the time making this video I can't suggest this phone enough. It's a fantastic phone and I would definitely recommend it. So go out there and buy it, let me know your thoughts about it. If I've missed anything in this review guys, make sure you post it down in the comments below. I'll be sure to uh, answer all your questions. Favorite, share, subscribe, like the video. It helps the channel grow and just makes me happy to see that. So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye bye.